Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Moore. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And this is not the podcast you're looking for. That's right. Today we're going to be talking about the Jedi Mind Trick. Today is Friday, or at least when I'm recording this. And Fridays are reserved for discussing Force Powers. So let's talk about one of the most famous, the Jedi Mind Trick. Now, when we think of the Jedi Mind Trick, the first thing that comes to mind is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mind tricking the stormtroopers in Star Wars. Now, these aren't the droids you're looking for. That was a terrible impression of Alan Guinness, by the way. You know, and, and Luke said to Obi-Wan after that, he says, How do we get past those troops? I thought we were dead. And Obi-Wan says, The Force can have a strong influence on the weak minded. <laughs> Bit of an insult to the stormtroopers, but hey. They were able to get past the stormtroopers by Obi-Wan basically. In implanting a suggestion in their minds via the force. That's kind of what the force mind trick is. Is in a way it's almost like um, Inception, where they're trying to plant the idea in someone's head. So you know, Obi Wan saying these aren't the droids you're looking for. You know, he can go about his business. Planting those ideas in the minds of the stormtroopers, and it tricks them into going along with it. Now, we have seen this used several times in the Star Wars films. Of course, most famously with Obi Wan and the stormtroopers. But we've also seen it used, or at least attempted to be used, by Luke Skywalker. When he attempts to use it on Jabba the Hutt. Now he successfully uses it on Bib Fortuna. You know, saying, I must be allowed to speak. And Bib saying, You must be allowed to speak. And then Jabba's like, You weak minded fool, he's using an old Jedi mind trick. And then says to him, You'll bring Captain Solo and Wookiee to me. Or, or whatever he says. I don't remember exactly. I hope my quote is correct. And Jabba's like, ho, 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 you know. Your mind powers don't work on me, boy. It's basically what he says. So, we know that certain species, or characters at least, are more resistant to it. Now, it would seem that modern Star Wars canon suggests that Huts and Toydarians are either immune or highly resistant as a racial trait. Though, I'm inclined to believe the possibility that Jabba is just, he knows enough, he's been around long enough to train his mind to be resistant to such things. So we see that in Return of the Jedi, and then of course in the prequels, where Qui-Gon seems to not really care about being a bit roguish in getting his way by using the mind trick quite often, as you notice in the movie. He basically mind tricks Boss Nav into allowing them to leave and giving them a transport. You could argue, based on his gesture, that he might be mind tricking Boss Nav further into allowing Jar Jar Binks to go with them. 
Later, of course, he uses it, or attempts to use it, on Watto. To which Watto says, you know, what do you think you are, some kind of Jedi waving your hand like that? I'm a Tardarian, mind tricks that don't work on me. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's my Italian Watto impression, I don't know. Yet again, more bad impressions from page turn as they were not. That's what you came to hear, I'm sure. Uh, and of course, that doesn't work. You owe me money. So yet again, either Watto is just trained his mind, or Twidarians are resistant to mind tricks. Um, and then, of course, in Attack of the Clones, it is used. <laughs> When Obi Wan convinces the guy at the bar, whose name in the canon is Ivan Slezbagano. Yes, you heard that right. That's his name. When he tries to sell Obi Wan death sticks, and Obi Wan's like, "You don't want to sell me death sticks. <laughs> yeah, you want to go home and rethink your life." I want to go home and rethink my life. Um, now, there are other moments in the prequels where the mind trick is used. I'm, uh, but I am drawing a blank at the moment in some of the more other instances. Uh, I should say, as probably some of the more forgettable instances. Meaning that I'm only thinking of the ones that really stick out in my mind. And then, of course, we come to probably the most famous recent use of it. And that would be Ray using it to escape on Starkiller Base. By the way, the Stormtrooper Hushi Mind Tricks is played by Daniel Craig. As in, James Bond himself is in that armor. And if you listen to his voice, he's doing an American accent. But that is definitely his voice. Ray has to try a few times to get it to work. Uh, three times, actually. Now, let me just detour really quick. The question of how was she able to do that? I think it's a combination of things. I imagine that Ray probably heard stories of Jedi mind tricks. But putting that aside, the dyad with Kylo Ren, I think the scene where he probes into her mind and she fights back is kind of like the key that unlocks a door. In my head, Gannon, Headcanon being how I see it. That is the moment that creates the, or at least activates, the diet. Because apparently it was prophesied that there would be a diet. But that's the one that activates it. And because of that, I believe that Ray and Kylo Ren are able to kind of feed off each other's first power. And that is why I think Ray had the know-how and the power, or at least the aptitude, to do a mind trick on the Stormtrooper. Was because that Diane was sharing power. And as Kylo Ren says, you know, um, what does he say? He says, He says something to the effect of she's going to become more powerful with each passing moment. And so I think that's why she was able to do that ability is because the dyad gave her that ability. Or, or should I say, she already had the aptitude for it. But that's the moment that really unlocked her potential. And probably some of Kylo Ren's know-how about Jedi mind tricks fed into her mind.
and therefore she was able to do it. You know, really great moment, I think. And a very funny moment, too, I like that. And you'll drop your blaster. You know, Force Awakens has some great humor. So that's really an overview of the uses of Jedi Mind Trick as seen in the movies. Um, I will be back in just a moment after we take a break and I'll talk about my feelings about this very iconic force power. See you in a minute. Hello there, this is Brennan Marr, host of Page Turners They Were Not a Star Wars Podcast. And I'm here to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the best way to make a podcast. Why is that? Well, first off, it's free. Yes, you heard me right. Anchor is free. Anchor has all the tools you need to make a podcast. From your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you on various platforms including Spotify and Apple Podcast. You can make money from the podcast. And get this, with no minimum listenership. That means you can make money even if no one listens to your podcast. That, of course, is not ideal, as Anchor will allow you to spread your podcast Bring in more viewers, and you can make more money because of it. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place on Anchor. If you're interested, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, and may the force be with you. Okay, and we are back. All right, so mind trick, I think, would be a very nice power to have. Though, admittedly, you know, it would be a very dishonest, deceitful power. Or at least in certain cases. I think it would be very useful to have in getting out of dangerous situations. You know, let's say you, you're cornered by a mugger. And you can use it on them. You, know, you don't want to rob me. You don't need to see my wallet. That would be useful, but I think it could also be abused. With like you're paying your bill at the restaurant. I don't need to pay my bill. You know, so I think that it it demonstrates. I think with a lot of Jedi is. How they use mind trick demonstrates a lot about them. Or it gives a little bit of insight into their personalities. Um, now, Obi Wan, we really only saw Obi Wan use it for good. Qui Gon Jinn used it for good, yes. But that was a little, you know, I wonder, he was a little bit more of a maverick. And I find that to be very interesting, but I think some Jedi and Force users would be tempted to use it kind of for their own personal gain. And that would be the temptation if I had that power. It would be nice to have in certain situations, but uh, could be a temptation to abuse it. The Force is really a test in a way. You can see why Yoda says the dark side is more seductive. 
and that it's easier to fall into that trap. Because the ability to use the force is something that can be very easily abused. And so the Jedi who have that power but use it for good, it really shows the strength of their characters. That they are disciplined enough not to abuse it. So, you know, it would be a tricky ability because I would have to keep it in check. I think that it's created some very iconic moments in the movies. You know, these aren't the droids you're looking for. It's become, you know, an iconic line. Now you don't need to see his identification. Which I'm sure people often use in jest all the time. And I think that it really has created some iconic moments. And I like the fact that Ray's first active use of the Force is a mind trick because Really, that is the first active use, at least on the light side of the Force, that we see in Star Wars. I'm trying to remember the exact order of scenes. I believe, if I understand it correctly, I'm trying to remember. I think we first see, the first use of the Force we see is Darth Vader Force choking Admiral Mott. I think. But the first use of the light side of the Force we see is Obi-Wan mind tricking the Stormtroopers. So it comes as no surprise to me yeah, the first time we see Ray act actively use the Force, she uses a mind trick. The reason I say actively is because the earlier moments, such as her flying on the escape from Jakku, which even see she says she doesn't know how she did it, and touching the lightsaber, those were moments where the force flowed through Rey without her realizing it. Whereas using the mind trick is the first time that she actively harnesses the force. So that's a really nice moment and a really great way to introduce her powers. And now, because we have all the puzzle pieces in place because of the um, because of the rise of Skywalker, we now kind of, or at least in my mind, understand how she knew how to do that. A very unique, very interesting force power. I remember using it in in some of the like Jedi Knight or Mysteries of the Sith games. You may recall, or Jedi Outcast, where you can actually use that on people. Like mind trick someone to sorry, mind trick someone to open a door for you. You know, or something like that. Yet again, it would be a power that could be easily abused. And so I would if I had it would have to be very careful. But it would be very tempting, but it would be nice to use in a dangerous situation. And just for fun, but it would be very easily tempting to use it for bad. For my own personal gain, to be selfish. So all in all, a very interesting force power. Great use of it in the movies. Great food for thought about how we could use it in real life. And, of course, became sort of Obi-Wan Kenobi's signature move. 
So those are my thoughts on the first power of mind trick. Let me know what you think about this power. Would you like to have it? How would you use it? Let me know. My name is Brendan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not. My Star Wars podcast. May the force be with you.